2010 to 2019, um, there were about 567,000 loans issued throughout this program. Um, you can see some of the industries that led the charge. Comes at no surprise, retail products and services. Uh, with the rise of e-commerce like Amazon uh, and other sites, uh, I don't think we're going to see going forward and doing the same webinar in 10 years and 2030. I don't think that's going to be the number one uh, issuer of loans. Uh, food and beverage should come at no surprise. Business services, healthcare services, automotive, um, and then you can see scrolling all the way down that education programs. Here's a breakdown, a little easier way to see. So retail products accounted for about 20% of the loans issued over the 7A program over the past 10 years. Uh, food and beverage, 16%, business services, 15%, healthcare services, and then the, the rest uh, are, are in single digits. So a little bit about the terminology. It's a little confusing if you're going through the raw data that the SBA produces. You have a few different options. Well, there's a few different options that the SBA selects uh, when they're providing data on what's going on with that particular loan that was issued to either an independent business or a franchisee. The first is paid in full. Basically, the loan has been repaid, um, and including all the principal and interest. The exact opposite of that is charged off. The loan has no reasonable expectation of further payments, uh, and it, it, it might uh, be in default as a subcategory. Committed, which for our intensive purposes today, there's not too much to extrapolate. Basically, someone got an approval for a loan and, and for one reason or another, uh, it was not dispersed. Uh, canceled, um, a limited amount of time. Exempt loan is a very popular category and we, we've studied that, we've gone into it, why loans might be exempt. Um, the big reason, as you can see here, it's protect trade secrets, commercial or financial information obtained from a, a person privilege or confidential. Essentially what our analysts have seen is the loan in the majority of cases is outstanding um, and the SBA is not reporting on that uh, outstanding loan. Um, so what we like to look at the most is paid in full where the loan has been repaid uh, as well as charged off. And then we have a few different ratios that we look at using those two numbers that, you know, when you have 500,000 loans and a very large number um, will have paid in full and, and charged off uh, across different industries, you can come up with some pretty interesting analysis. And then keep in mind, you know, most SBA loans are for more than five years. Um, so if you're just looking at the last 10 years of data, a lot of them are going to be in the exempt status. But when you look back 30 years, you're going to have a lot more data on the paid in full and charged off. Um, however, you know, you have to keep in mind also that industries change. And over the last 30 years, we'll, we'll look at, or, you know, we'll look at some of the numbers in terms of retail products and services where, if I was going to invest in a retail products and services franchise or an independent business, I'd be more concerned with the, the most recent numbers over the last five years, 10 years, than looking 30 years back before the, the boom of e-commerce and some of those companies like Amazon as well as Shopify, Shopify um, uh, which, which helps support a lot of independent e-commerce sites. Um, so that's a little bit about how we went about this. Um, and I just wanted to go through uh, our deep dive on the, the franchise industries, uh, which given the identifier code of these different franchises and the data that we are able to take from uh, the SBA and information that the government releases, we're able to get more statistically significant information uh, in the franchise space going 30 years back. 
Um, so it shouldn't come as, as much as of a sur surprise, but food and beverage was the, the largest, uh, accounted for the largest number of SBA loans. Uh, traditionally, that's been about 50% of franchises um, that are operating in the U.S. are in the food and beverage segment. However, as we've seen over the last five years, 10 years, many of these other industries um, have had franchises enter into them uh, where maybe you had a, a company that had five locations, corporate locations in the real estate property management space or commercial cleaning space, and now they're a franchise. They might not have been franchising for the past 30 years, rather for the past five or 10 years. So we've seen a lot of growth, partly um, supported by private equity funds that particularly invest in franchising. And they're looking beyond food and beverage to business services, health and beauty, children's programs, education programs, preschools, uh, where we anticipate the numbers uh, to really start increasing and to have less of a heavy concentration with the, the food and beverage category. You'll see if you, you spend some time on our site, we're starting to define more of the, the terminology that we use. So you can hover over uh, keywords like franchise, for example. Um, again, this goes through the, the SBA loan statuses. For those that are joining uh, the Facebook or YouTube live a little late, the key terms that we're looking at are paid in full. For these SBA 7A loans, which, which of them were paid in full, where the loan has been repaid uh, full of principal and, and, and interest payments? And then which ones have been charged off by the banks, where the loan has no reasonable expectation of, of further payment, and it's my, most likely in default where you have the subcategory of, of default. Um, so what our analysts did again, there's over 500 NA ICS categories. And the issue with that, especially when you look at franchises, oftentimes it's self-reporting. So a franchisee of a big brand like Subway uh, might say that they're in, you know, possibly by accident, more of the, the grocery space. Uh, or all the franchisees aren't agreeing on what uh, category they're using of these 500 plus codes. And we went through and made them all the same category where we use food and beverage. And our analysts are going through and, and even having subcategories for food and beverage right now. Um, so looking at 14 different industries, uh, depending on the time, we'll, we'll go through most of them or, or we'll just go through a few of them today and you can uh, go through the rest of our site for the, the other industries. Um, but what I'm really concerned with and what I know, want to know is what's the paid in full rate? So over the last 30 years, you can see cleaning and maintenance leads the charge at 67%, business services 61%, automotive real estate right around 60, um, and then home services down at 32%. And then you have what we call the adjusted uh, charged off rate. Um, essentially, we don't want to be counting all these numbers when we look at um, when we look at the the data. Like, I don't, I don't. If a loan's been committed or canceled, I don't want to have that as part of the the loans I'm comparing with the, the charged off rate. So this is based essentially comparing the loans that have been issued. Uh, and what percent of the, those loans that were issued um, were, were essentially charged off, or you could say defaulted. Uh, it's, it's, it's the indication that the loan's gone bad. Most likely there was a major issue with the business, the business failed, whether it was because of the operator, uh, the, the business model, or the location, that's to be determined, uh, but we can we can extrapolate from this information that the, the business has, uh, has run into issues. 